Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today we're going to be looking at tile map collisions or how you can get your players or different objects uh, to detect collisions with a tile map in Game Maker Studio 2. Uh, so the advantages of that are better performance, more flexibility, as well as some other neat tricks you can do uh, to improve your code. So before we get started, we must uh, make two observations in order to make our code a bit easier to understand. First of all, is that we need to do two checks um, for every directions. Uh, that is because, as you can see on this diagram, uh, the player, which is in orange, may be overlapping a, uh, a tile represented in blue uh, just by a bit. And so simply doing a single check in the center of an edge uh, isn't going to be enough to detect a, any collisions. What you must do is check every corner of the object uh, depending on the direction. That will um, cover any case where your player is smaller or the same size as your tiles. If your player is bigger than your tiles, you may have to do even more checks. Um, generally speaking though, one in each corner should be enough, perhaps one in the center if your object is slightly larger than your tiles. Next, we need to understand that we can snap a set of coordinates uh, simply by uh, removing a couple bits at the end of a number. Now, this only works for powers of 2, but since most tile sets tend to be uh, 32 by 32, 64 by 64, and so on, uh, it's perfectly acceptable to use. So, uh, here is an example. For example, if your Green, uh, if your tile was 64 by 64, you can simply end it with the complement of 63, which is one less than 64. And as you can see over on the right, if we have 587, uh, which is not a multiple of 64, and we end it with the complement of 63, which is basically all the ones apart from 32 and downwards, uh, what we end up with is 576, which is uh, the next lowest uh, multiple of 64 from 587. Uh, so now that that's out of the way, we can get started looking at how we can code this in Game Maker Studio 2. So the project we're going to start off with is quite simple. Uh, I just have a room here with a basic uh, tile set set out um, just to give a bit of uh, aesthetics to it. And there's a background. As you can see, most of it is pretty standard. Uh, so if I go back to the workspace, you can see it's just a normal um, auto tile tile set created from this image here. You can really use whatever you like. So the first thing we need to do to um, be able to collide with our uh, with our tile map is to actually create a special tile map for collisions. And so what we're going to do is first create a new sprite, which I'm going to call SPR underscore mask, uh, which will represent uh, the, the tiles for collisions, just so we can see them in the room. And so I'm going to quickly edit the Im image. We're going to resize it. Uh, or is the resize button? Resize all frames. And we're going to make it uh, 64 by uh, 128. Like so, I'm going to quickly turn on the grid, make it 64 by 64, like so. And what I like to use for my collisions is um, a sort of a square like so. I like to make a double width of two pixels so you can see it in the room editor. And then I'll turn down the grid to 16 by 16 and add another square in the middle. And this is the way I like to have uh, my mask. Some other people like to have diagonal lines in the middle instead. I don't I don't think it looks very nice. I think this looks a lot better. Uh, so this is what I'm going to use. And that's it. That's all you need. It's nothing for in-game. It doesn't have to look good. It's just there uh, to, to be able to be, be viewed in the room editor. So we can close this, go back to our workspace and create our tile set. So you can just go here to create tile set and I'm going to call it TS underscore mask. And for the sprite is going to be the one we just created. And over in the properties, we're going to make it 64 by 64. So um, I, cho I choose to make mine 64 by 64 because that's the same size as this tile set over here. However, 
If yours is smaller, say 32 by 32, you can use that as well. In fact, you could have this be a different size from your main tile set. Um, the important thing is, for this tutorial at least, is that it's a power of 2 because it does make a lot of our maths much easier. Uh, you may have noticed that I left a blank space on the left of the tile. Uh, that's because Gameco requires you to do that, uh, just to optimize things. It likes to have a blank space, top left corner. Uh, so even if you only have one tile, you need really the space for two tiles. So what we're going to do now is go into our room and add a quick tile set to this room, uh, tile set layer. So I'm going to click this uh, button here, create new tile layer, and I'm going to call it uh, collision underscore map because this will be the map we collide with. Down here on the bottom left you can choose a tile set to use. I'm going to use TS underscore mask and I'm simply gonna add these wherever there should be a collision. Uh, so this is quite simple you just click and drag. You can either fill or not fill your um, your regions. It doesn't really matter since uh, since it, it won't impact performance because of the way tile maps work, uh, which is great. Uh, this is one of the big advantages of tile maps over objects is the performance is much, much better. I choose not to fill it because I think it looks better. It's also clearer um, to me to see uh, just that you'll be able to collide with the edges. You will never be inside a block. And uh, as you can see, this is quite quick to do, it will take more time for bigger levels, but uh, the nice thing is that you don't have to deal with different uh, edges and so on, you just have to put down the tiles. This is why I like to use two tile sets, one for collisions, one for the aesthetics, is that I'm not as tied down to making things correct when dealing with my uh, aesthetics things. And for now I'll leave it on, uh, as you can see you can toggle it on and off uh, to see what your level looks like without it. I'm going to leave it on so that we can s have a better idea. Uh, in game of what is happening. And that, that's really it, it. You don't have to do much more in the room editor. Uh, everything is already set up. So now we're going to create a new object, which will be our player object. And we're going to give it a sprite. Here you go. So I'm going to call it uh, obj underscore player. And the first event we're going to add is a create event because we're going to have to define a couple things. I'm just going to close the room for now so we can make a bit more space in the project area. And what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to do some basic player variables. So that will be things like the movement speed, so how fast he can move, he can move left and right. And uh, I'm actually running this game at 60 FPS, so I think a value of 8 will be good. Next will be the jump impulse. This is uh, going to represent how high your player will jump. This will depend on the gravity values you choose as well. I'm going to go with 21. I found it to work rather nice. Next, the gravity, which I'm going to call grav. And I found that a value of 0.75 works nicely. If you're working at 30 FPS, that value will have to be different. And if you're using delta timing again, uh, that will be different as well. Finally, we have the variable for, uh, for the vertical speed. We're going to set that to zero. This is not something that you always have to keep that as zero uh, to start off with. This is something that uh, that we'll need to calculate in order to, uh, to change uh, how fast your player is falling. Next, we need to get some values about the tile maps. Uh, th we need to basically retrieve a bit of tile map information uh, before we start colliding with it. So. The first thing we need to find out is the layer the tile map is on. And we can just do var l equals layer underscore get underscore id. And we can just give the name of the layer. Now remember in our room editor we called it collision underscore map. So this is all we need to do uh, to get our layer id. And our layer contains a tile map so we can get our tile map by doing tile map is equal to layer underscore tile map underscore get underscore id and the layer we want to check is l the layer we defined up here 
Finally, we have um, a couple more things to do uh, to find, and that is a couple uh, sprite informations. Uh, first of all, we have to get uh, the bounding boxes of our sprites. So we're going to do sprite b box underscore left is equal to sprite underscore get underscore b box underscore left. Our sprite index. Did I set the sprite for our player? Yes, I did. Sprite index, and we're going to subtract the sprite get offset from it. And that will be also sprite index. So what we're doing here is finding uh, how far from the sprite origin the bounding box is. And this will help us with collisions uh, a lot because we'll be able to determine where the position of our player should be based on where the position of our bounding box should be. So then we have to do the same for each of the other, um, for a bunch of the other uh, bounding boxes. So next we have the right bounding box. And uh, over here we also need this to be right. And over on the right here, this will be get y, uh, still x offset, never mind. Down here, we're checking for the bottom bounding box. So here we'll write b box underscore bottom. And here we'll change this to the y offset. And here, finally, the top bounding box. Get b box underscore top. And again, the Y offset. So again, the B box information will be used to snap our player in the correct location. So uh, this is it for the create event. What we need now is uh, a bit more information, uh, a bit more code in the step event. So we're going to add a step step event, and I'm just going to split this view. Uh, into two columns and put my step event over on the right. This way we still have the variable names over here on the left that we can refer to if we need and we have plenty of space on the right to have our movement code. So first of all what we want to do is get some uh, some player inputs. So what I'm going to write first is var dx so uh, our difference in x will be move underscore speed times our keyboard check vk underscore left, oh, sorry, vk right minus keyboard check vk left. So let me just move the view around so you can see this clearer. So this is uh, just as you would do uh, usually in most uh, game code projects, you just subtract the right check minus the left check and multiply it by the movement speed, which um, gives us how much the player wants to move left or right. Next, the y, that will simply be um, v speed. So we want to, uh, we're basically saying that our player will, f uh, will want to move by v speed amount. And now we can uh, update our vSpeed value uh, by incrementing it by our gravity value. So this is the basic uh, input code. We can move left and right. Uh, we'll add jumping later because we first uh, because it needs a bit of a collision checking. Uh, so first what we'll tackle is vertical movement because right now our player isn't even falling. So what we want to do is a quickly comment our code, do vertical move. And what we're gonna do is, first of all, move the player. So we're gonna do y plus equals dy. And now we can start uh, doing our collision checking and essentially move our player back, uh, move our player outside of the tile map if we do collide. So first we're gonna check if we were moving downwards. So this is quite simple. We just do if dy is greater than zero, then we're moving downwards. Uh, downwards. If not, we're moving upwards. 
or not moving. However, if we're not moving, uh, we're not colliding, so it should still work. Upwards. So if we are moving downwards, what we want to do is, uh, first of all, get uh, the two collision points we were talking about in, uh, in the slides. So uh, var t1 is equal to tile map get at pixel. And uh, the tile map element ID is a tile map we defined over here in the create event. So that is just tile map. Then we want to check the, uh, well, we're moving downwards. So you want to check the bottom left corner first. So we can do bbox underscore left, bbox underscore bottom. So that will be checking at the bottom left. And what this will do is return us some tile map information. Uh, apparently there is an error somewhere. And it's not telling me what it is. Oh, I did not spell var correctly. Here you go. S spell your variables correctly, uh, your keywords correctly. So what this uh, tile map get a pixel does is return us a tile information piece of packet, which includes the index of the tile map, uh, of the tile, it, so that is what image it's using. It has some extra information, like if it's flipped, rotated, and so on. But we're just interested in the index. So is there something or is there not? And we're just, to retrieve that information, we need to add this, um, this uh, tile information by tile underscore index underscore mask. So what this is doing is basically only keeping the bits that represent our index. So it's really quite of bit manipulation. If you're not too sure what's going on, there is also a function called tile get, uh, I believe it's tile get index over here and you can just put uh, tile map get index in there. It also works. It's a bit more typing. It's a bit more functions. I prefer to use this um, and tile index mask over here. Uh, also, if you look at the examples that YoYo uh, -Yo games have provided, they also tend to use this uh, bit masking over here. So this is the bottom left collision check we've done. Now we need to check the bottom right. So we're going to write var t2 equals tile map underscore get underscore at pixel. Again, we're checking the tile map we uh, got before, and this time it's bbox right, bbox underscore. Uh, bottom and again we need, we're just interested in the tile index so now we have the two collision points at each corner uh, what we want to do is basically say that if either of those have collided then we want to uh, we want to shift our our objects back so that uh, we're no longer colliding and because we're using a power of two, we can use our neat little trick. So what we're gonna do is say if t1 is not equal to zero, so if t1 had something there, or t2 is not equal to zero, then we are currently colliding. What we're going to first do is calculate where we want our bounding box to be, because our player is not necessarily uh, 64 by 64, it could be smaller. So what we want to um, find is say that the bounding box, the bottom bounding box should really be aligned to the 64 by 64 grid so that it's not in the grid. And uh, what we can say is um, bbox underscore bottom. And we use a little trick where we end it with the complement of 63. Now, if you're using a 32 by 32 grid, you would uh, use the 31's complement. If you're using a 16 by 16, you would complement with 15. Uh, it's always one less than the size of your grid. So beatbox bottom and complement 63 will align it to the 64 by 64 grid. Uh, will align the, uh, the bottom bounding box. However, we want it to be one above that because we don't want to be just on the limit. We want to be just above the tile. So we're going to subtract one to that from that. 
and this gives us where we want our bounding box to be. Now, unfortunately, you cannot just say bbox equals that because bbox is a read-only variable. And so what we're going to do is subtract sprite underscore bbox underscore bottom, which is the value we calculated over here. And this now will represent the y position of our object and where we should be. So we can simply say y equals uh, where we want our bounding box to be minus the offset from our bounding box to our y coordinate. So um, sorry if this is a little uh, complicated to understand. Um, I'll try to explain it again for those of you who have a harder time understanding uh, bit patterns and so on. Uh, this section over here um, basically aligns our bounding box to the 64 by 64 grid. Uh, this here makes it uh, be just one above that 64 grid because we don't want our player to be one pixel into the ground. We want it to be one uh, just on the ground. And here by subtracting our beatbox bottom, we're basically converting our bounding box coordinates to, a, uh, to our origin coordinate, to our player coordinate. And so we can just set our Y position to that. Now, because this is a platformer game, we want to stop falling as soon as we uh, hit a wall vertically. So we can write V underscore speed equals zero. And this will stop your player from, uh, from, from this will stop the speed of your player from increasing uh, when he's on the ground. So this is it for uh, downwards falling. We can actually test this to see if it works by opening our room quickly and just placing our player inside our instances. So make sure you select your instance layer and drop your player somewhere here. I'll drop him here. And now if we press play, we should be able to see our player fall downwards. However, we haven't done anything with our inputs yet. I mean, we are storing them in a variable, but we're not uh, doing much else with it. So we won't be able to move our player around, but we'll be able to see that our proof of concept for the collisions uh, work vertically. So we're uh, still compiling game should run pretty soon and here you go as you can see our player is down here and it is not falling through the blocks even though we are uh, increasing the y variable before the collisions so uh, what we can do now is quickly I want to set the view over here so that we will be able to so that we'll be able to follow the player around uh, I just have a basic view set up over here to follow the player around. Uh, so what we're going to do now is do the same for our upwards movement. And all we need to do is essentially copy this whole code, paste it in here. And we're just going to move the camera over, uh, hide these trays so we have a bit more workspace to work with. And what we need to change is over here, uh, we're not dealing with the bottom left and bottom right corners anymore. We're dealing with the uh, top left and top right. So we're going to change these two to uh, B box top and B box top as well. And down here as well, we're actually dealing with our uh, top uh, bounding box. Now there is something else we need to change over here. And that is because uh, if you can imagine, before when we were moving downwards, we wanted to move... Um, into a smaller, uh, in, um, we want to move into a smaller tile map uh, coordinate because we wanted to move back up where the coordinates are smaller. However, if we're going, if we were moving upwards and colliding, we now want to move downwards. So we want to move to the next biggest um, multiple of 64, not the next smallest. And this is a pretty simple fix. All we need to do is uh, remove this uh, minus one over here because we won't be needing that. And instead, we'll add 64 over here and make sure it is in parentheses. So now we're calculating the next biggest uh, cell to be in rather than the next smallest cell to be in. Uh, this way, instead of uh, snapping upwards, we snap downwards. Uh, we also need to change this bounding box over here to sprite underscore B box top. So this should handle our upwards collisions pretty well. Uh, as you can see, it's essentially the same code. However, we cannot move up and down yet, so it won't really change much. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, deal with our horizontal movement. So we're going to write do horizontal move. 
give ourselves some space. And uh, we're just going to copy this whole code and change it to work with our horizontal movement. So first of all, we need to change our x coordinate based on dx. Next, what we need to do is check that we're moving to the right. And so we're just checking if dx is greater than zero, therefore we're moving to the right. If not, else, we're moving towards the left. So if we're moving to the right, then what we want to do is check our top right corner and our bottom right corner. So what we're going to do here is change this to right and top. And here we already have right and bottom. So what we have to do now is change uh, this lines here so that we're actually changing our x coordinate. So we're moving to the right. So if we're colliding on the right, we want to move to the next lowest uh, x coordinate. So we're going to change this to x is equal to b box right uh, complement of 63 minus 1 minus the sprite b box right. So if we are overlapping on the right, we want to find the correct position for our right bounding box and then adjust that to get our x coordinate. Now here we have v speed equals 0. We don't need this. If we're colliding along the x axis, we should not change how fast we're falling. Now to the left side of things, it's also quite simple. Uh, this time we're checking for the left collision, so we're checking uh, left top and left bottom. And again, we want to change this here, this line over here, so that it's changing our x coordinate. So x equals b box left plus the 64, because now if we're colliding over on the left side, we want to snap to the next biggest, so we want to move to the right, so we're adding 64 and complementing this with 63, and we're subtracting our left bounding box offset. And we don't need the v-speed either, because we're doing this along the x-axis. And this is it for colliding left and right, uh, and moving left and right over here. So now if we save this uh, here and run this, we should be able to move our character around with the keys uh, no jumping yet, however, this is uh, a, just a small bit more of code we need to add. But as soon as the game runs, we'll be able to see that we can now move left and right and collide left and right. As soon as it finishes compiling. Here it is. As you can see, I can move left and right. And I am not going through the walls, which is great. As you can see on the left, I'm staying nice and uh, against the wall. And if I move to the right, I'm also staying nice and flush against the wall. So this is great. So um, all that's left to do now is adding uh, the jump, the ability to jump. And that is, again, pretty simple. Uh, all we're going to do is go move back up. And before all, uh, all of this code over here, where we change our dx and dy variables, we're going to have to change the v-speed. Uh, when, if we're pressing up. However, we only want to be able to jump if we're on the floor. So we need to check uh, whether the bottom left or bottom right corner is currently uh, just above the ground. So what we're going to do is var underscore t1 is equal to tile map underscore get that pixel as usual. Again, we're using the tile map we calculated earlier. And we're going to use the bottom left corner, so we're going to write bbox underscore left, bbox underscore bottom. And uh, we're going to end this with a tile index mask. Now there's one more thing we have to think about before we move on to the right side collision, is that our player is always just one pixel above the ground or at least the, the bounding box is always one pixel above the ground. And therefore we need to check one pixel below the ground, uh, I mean below the player, to make sure he's hitting, if he's inside the ground or not. So we're just going to add one to B-box bottom over here, just to check right beneath the player. We can do the same for T2, which will be our bottom right corner. Uh, I'm actually just going to copy this line and change this to B-box right. Now we just have to use the same code again. If t1 is not equal to 0 or t2 is not equal to 0, I just want to add a space here. 
then uh, we are currently just above the ground and therefore we can say uh, if keyboard whoops if keyboard check if I could only press keyboard check uh, VK up so if the player is currently pressing up then we can say that the V speed is equal to minus jump underscore impulse and if you remember jump impulse is the variable we uh, defined over here as our uh, as kind of the speed at which a player was type jumping and remember to spell it correctly uh, like so so now we should be able to jump because if we are over the ground and we press up we're changing our vertical speed, so we just have to save this and run it again. And again, this took a small while to compile, but hopefully we now have all the features for a basic platformer because we're already able to move left and right, collide vertically, and now we added the ability to jump, so we'll be able to make sure that our upwards collision works as well. Uh, so it's uh, just about finished compiling, it's just putting together uh, the game. Here we go. So uh, I can now move left and right, and if I press up, I can jump, which is perfect. And if I go below uh, a wall and press up, as you can see, I now hit uh, my head against the wall and fall straight back down. And as you can see, it's a pretty robust system. I'm not getting stuck or anything, even if I keep jumping. It's a rather nice system. So this is basically it for all the code. All that's left to do now is to uh, turn off the tile map so that we can uh, just have our nice tile set in the background. Uh, so all you have to do is open the room, go to our collision map and uh, turn it off with the little eye icon over here. As you can see, that turns it off. And if we now press play, we should see pretty much exactly the same project I showed you um, at the start of this video where uh, it didn't look like there was a collision map there, uh, which is great. So um, whilst it's compiling, I'll talk about using two different uh, maps, one for the tiles, one for the collisions. Uh, this is great it's because uh, it makes it a little easier to just check one value. It also, sorry, it also means you can have multiple different tiles for dangers, maybe you may have a you may want to create a red one, which um, when colliding with it, you would die. Uh, and um, it's also nice because maybe you're not using a tile set for your level. Maybe you're using a hand-drawn background and you just want to add tiles to that. Uh, it's a rather nice way of doing things. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it, uh, this video on making collisions with tile maps. If you have, uh, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already to see more. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, tile maps or any suggestions for future videos, please uh, put them in the uh, in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Maker tutorials.